So in this video, we have seen that force can be qualitatively characterized as a push or a pull, uh, but it's never defined by Newton's second law, which basically gives you just a relationship between the forces and the mass and acceleration. To really be able to define the forces, you have to understand the material interaction between the two objects. And since the material interaction between the two objects will differ from situation to situation, you need separate force laws. Okay, so we've looked at universal gravitational attraction, we have looked at the friction, uh, and we looked at the drive friction over here. Uh, we'll talk about the drag forces a little bit later, and we have looked at uh, linear elastic forces. Now, what can we do with the forces? Well, first thing is that we know that the force is a vector. So force is a vector because it has direction and it has magnitude. And it obeys the axioms of vector spaces, right? So those are the three conditions that have to be satisfied for some quantity to be a, a vector quantity. Now, if you say that the force is a vector, then we can write it like this, where F is a vector, F without any bar or an arrow on top is magnitude, and E hat gives you a direction. So if you have an object and you have a force F applied on it, then if you know its magnitude and if you know the direction it's acting in with respect to some chosen coordinate system, then you can write this force completely. Okay. Now force is a vector, which means that you can do graphical addition uh, of uh, the vectors. You can also do algebraic addition of the vectors. So let's look at an example. Let's say we have uh, an object and on this object we have two forces applied one is a vertical direction force of 10 newton and the other one is let's say 5 newton force okay and let's say this is acting at 45 degree from horizontal okay so we have this object and we are looking to find out what are the total forces acting on this object so sigma f we we'll often use sigma to indicate the summation of the forces or summation of something else equal to the two forces, so we have the 10 Newton force, let's call it F1, plus the second one, we'll call it F2, okay? Now, let's try to do this graphically first, okay? So we have our coordinate system, X and Y, and I'm going to pick a different color, and I will draw my 10 Newton force, okay? I will draw my 10 Newton force over here, that's 10 Newton, and then I have my 5 Newton force, that's 5 Newton, and that's at 45 degree and I can choose some scale I could say that okay uh, 1 Newton is equal to 1 centimeter so then this line would be 10 centimeters long and this line would be over here 5 centimeter long right okay and then once you have that you can join the tip of the 5 Newton force with the tail of the 10 Newton and that would be your resultant right so you can measure what this length would be or you can even try to find it trigonometrically right so let's try to find it uh, trigonometrically so I have let me draw this a little bit bigger so I have 10 Newton here and then I have 5 Newton acting that way and this is at 45 degree angle right and my resultant is basically this vector this is my resultant so that's what I'm looking for let's call it let's call it uh, what we're calling it Sigma F right so that's Sigma F for you okay so we need to find this horizontal component this is x-axis this is y-axis let's draw perpendicular Okay, so what is this component? What is the x component over here? So the x component is basically the same as what this is. So that's 5 cosine 45. That's 5 cosine 45. And the y component is from here to here. So from here to here is 5 sine 45. And from here to here is 10 Newton, right? From here to here. So you can add 10 Newton with 5 sine 45 and you'll get your you know x and y. So let's write that. So sigma f, graphically speaking, is obtained as 5 times cosine 45 i hat so i hat is unit vector this way j hat is unit vector that way plus 10 plus 5 sine 45 j hat and let's say everything is newton so that will be your sigma f and this is solving it graphically now let's try to solve this using uh, algebra okay because that's what we prefer to do most of the time so we have f1 plus f2 let's write f1 so F1 is 10 Newton, that's this force, that's pointing along J hat. So that would be 10 J hat Newton. And F2 would be equal to 
So this is five Newtons pointing 45 degrees from horizontal. So if I draw this out by itself, I'll do it one more time. So I have this five Newton force, I have 45 degree here. It will be five times cosine 45 because I draw perpendiculars and that's five cosine, cosine 45. That's your X component and that's along I hat, right? That's I hat plus uh, this component over here from here to here, that would be five sine 45 J hat. Okay, so that's your F2. So now we add both of them and we get 10 J hat plus five, and I'll write this as uh, root two, one over root two times I hat plus J hat. And that's basically the same as what you have over here. Both of them, of course, have to be same. There should be no difference between the two. Let's look at another example. This is an example where I have, let's say, a gusset plate. Okay, so here is a gusset plate. And we have three beams connected to this plate. So there's one beam, there's another beam. And here's another beam. And this is the kind of structure that you will find often uh, in the bridges where you have multiple beams connected via a single plate. This is our, uh, right over here is what we call the, the cassette plate. Okay. All right. So let's say we have certain forces applied on this. So we have force F1 here, be defined as 25 Newton. Okay. And then we have force, uh, we'll call it F2 uh, as 10 Newton. And then you have force F3 here. Let's say this is 30 Newton. And we also know the angles. So let's say this is 80 degree. And this is 75. Okay. And we're looking for some of the forces acting on the gusset plate. So what is sigma F? Okay. So sigma F is equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3, okay? So what is F1? F1 is 25, we'll resolve it along X direction, that'll be cosine 80, I hat, plus along Y direction will be 25, sine 80, J hat, and that's F1, plus F2 is 10 cosine 75, and that's towards minus I hat direction, so this will become minus I hat, uh, plus 10, sine 75 j hat right so everybody understands why this is negative i hat because if you draw perpendicular to the x-axis you can get the force f2 by adding this vector and this vector and clearly this vector over here is pointing along negative i hat direction plus f3 and f3 is 30 and that's along negative j hat direction so i'm going to erase this and this will become minus 30 j hat so now if you want to find out the total force you have to come com to uh, collect all the i hat terms and j hat terms so we have 25 times cosine 80 uh, minus 10 times cosine 75 uh, that's all i hat terms plus 25 times sine 80 plus 10 times sine 75 minus 30 j hat okay so let's say this is f sub x this is f sub y so we'll get sigma f as f sub x i hat plus f sub y j hat, right? And fx and fy can be computed because we know all the numbers. So if the question was, what is the norm or the magnitude of this force? So sigma f magnitude would be equal to square root of fx squared plus fy squared. If uh, let's say the angle uh, of this force was asked for, then you can compute that. We know tan theta is equal to fy over fx okay and that will give you the numerical value of the theta but you also have to worry about what the signs of fx and fy are right if both of them are positive so let's say your you know f comes out to be like this where this is fx and this is fy then this would be the theta right but if you find out that your signs are different then that could put this vector in different quadrants okay so you have to look at the signs as well to be able to find what the theta should be